This video is all about the recent F1 visa trends, the unique and the different questions which are being asked right now for fall 2024. If you're planning to go for the interview in the next two months, this is a must know. I also have with me a student and she's here to share her experience of getting her visa approved after a rejection with a change in university for a double masters. And hers was not the easy 30 second, 15 second interview. It was a proper two and a half minute interview in which she was asked a lot of questions. The same question was asked repeatedly to her. And this is a perfect example of how to stay calm in a tough interview. Keep on watching. Hi guys, my name is Shachi and I'm a travel and a visa coach. On this channel, you'll find lots of useful videos on the US visa process. We have an entire playlist for you for fall 2024. So make sure to check it out. In the description box below, you'll also see links for a lot of free resources and preparation material. So once you're done watching the video, you can download it and study from there. So this video is going to be about the recent F1 visa trends and observing and analyzing the interviews in the month of May and June so far, we have observed five main trends. So let's jump right into it. So let me start with the biggest trend of this year and that has been the increase in the number of casual conversational questions. This year we saw that F1 visa interviews were not just about the typical questions about course, university, funding, future plan, but a lot of casual questions which depended on your experience, it depended upon your interests, strengths and weaknesses. The biggest reason for this I feel is that visa officers have understood that most students are going to come prepared for the typical visa interview questions and they are not interested in hearing the same answers. So they really want to test, it, test you out and see how much research you've actually done about yourself, about the course and about the life in the US. So let me give you examples of some typical questions that have been asked recently. What is the challenging situation you have faced at work? What do you not like about your work? What will you do other than studying in the US? What subject did you find the most difficult and how did you overcome it? So these are the typical casual questions. Now here are some tips to answer them. The first step is to remember that there is no wrong or right answer for such type of questions because it's going to be subjective, it's going to be depending on you. But the important thing is to speak, not to pause, not to leave a very long gap. Some of the interviews we noticed that when students were asked such questions, there was a long pause or long gap and the visa officer didn't get the answer and he moved on to the next question. So whatever it is, whatever comes to your mind, start speaking and do make sure that you are able to say something in for these particular questions. The second tip and I think this is really important is to remember not to answer in such a way that it is highlighting something negative about yourself, about your plans or about your family or anybody else. So the way to answer such questions would be to put a positive spin to it and put it in such a way that it shows that you are okay with working hard, you are okay with taking up challenges, you are okay with failures, you are okay with figuring things out as and when they come. So let me answer a question for you so that what I'm saying becomes more clear. Now let's say that you are asked the question, what is the most challenging situation at work? One way to answer it would be to say that I find my work very challenging because the number of hours are long, I work for almost 10 hours a day and I don't have much time for anything else. Now, what do you think is wrong with this answer? When somebody says like this, it probably means that you're not okay with working hard, you're not okay with putting in long hours of work, which might be required for your masters or your program in the US, and probably you're taking up this course just to escape your job, which you don't like. On the other hand, let's see another way to answer the same question. What is the most challenging situation at work? Well, I really like my job, but what I find challenging is that I'm limited to the same type of projects that I've been doing from the last one year. And it's become difficult for me to explore new ideas, new technologies, and to find other type of work. And that is why I feel that the masters is really crucial at this point of time in my career, so that I can get the skill sets that are required for this. And when I come back, I'll be able to handle much better work and a wider range of projects. See what I did. It's the same question same person and you can see how different the answer sounds, how different the personality of the person comes out. So this is what I mean that when you are faced with a personality oriented, a casual question, do not highlight anything negative about yourself, put it in a positive, upbeat way and if possible try to link it to the entire reason of why you want to go to the US. The second biggest trend that we noticed this year was increase in the number of technical questions. Almost every interview had at least one technical question that was being asked. And when I say technical question, it doesn't mean that it applies to only students who are going for tech related courses. 
Technical questions essentially means that questions which are being asked about your undergrad, about your work experience and the course in the US. And this applies for even non-technical courses and backgrounds like business, administration, marketing, HR and others. So to prepare for technical questions, you need to do a thorough scan of three things. Number one, your undergrad subjects. So what are the main subjects that you studied in your undergrad? Pick three to four examples and make sure that you are aware of these topics and the latest developments in these topics. Number two, your work experience. So do a scan of your work experience and what are the keywords, what are the phrases that you have used in the DS-160 form and make sure that you are thorough with those. And number three, the most important, the course in the US. It's really important that you do a scan of what are the subjects, electives that you're going to be taking in your masters, your bachelors or your PhD. You will find this list on the university website itself. So do a thorough scan and make sure that you're familiar with the courses, with the technologies and again you have read up the latest developments in your field. One typical mistake that I see students make very often is that they are aware of only the first semester courses. So when we do mock interviews and we ask them, tell me about your course, most students are able to tell the first semester subjects but not beyond that. Do keep in mind that when you go for the visa interview, you should have an idea of your entire curriculum. So let's say that it's a 30 credit course and you're required to take 10 subjects, you should have the idea of the entire 10 subjects. Of course, it's a tentative list, the subjects can change when you register for the classes and when you go to the US, but for the sake of visa interview, you need to know your 10 subjects and out of these 10, you need to be thorough with at least 2 to 3. So that whenever the visa officer asks you any technical questions, you are able to speak and you are able to explain well to them. Also want to give you examples of some technical questions which are being asked recently, but do keep in mind these are just examples, they might not apply exactly to you because like I said the technical questions asked to you will come from your undergrad, your work experience and your course in the US. So here are some examples, people who mentioned AI either in the DS-160 form or in their answers were asked questions like what is the latest development in AI, have you read or do you know about generative AI? The second example, people who mentioned cybersecurity in their courses or in their answers were asked about a recent cyber attack and what is um, you know, the latest development that they have read about cybersecurity. Third example, people who are going for management courses and who mentioned marketing as one of the keywords in their answers or in their form were asked topics about digital marketing and what are the drawbacks of digital marketing and what are the main challenges that the companies today are facing while doing digital marketing. So really, really important that you do a full scan of your profile right from the undergrad to the masters and be prepared for technical questions. The third trend that we noticed this year was that there is a very heavy focus on university. So every year we see that there is some focus on the university, but it is embassy specific. Like sometimes Mumbai embassy focuses more on university, sometimes Hyderabad focuses more on university. But this year we saw that almost all consulates were focusing heavily on the university and it somehow felt like university was one of the main deciding factors for approving the F1 visa. So in case you have applied to only one university or you have a university which is not very high ranked, then I suggest that you prepare very, very thoroughly for all the other aspects of the interview. So that if any other question is asked to you, you should be able to answer it really well and not let the university be the only factor in approving your visa. And this also means filling your form, your DS-160 form well, practicing, preparing for your uh, interview questions and like we just discussed, preparing for the technical and the casual questions as well. I'm really curious to know which university you're going for. So do comment below and let me know which university. And in case you have a rejection for the university, also do let us know so that we get an understanding of which are the universities which are typically facing rejection in this F1 visa interview. The fourth trend, and I feel that this is the most positive trend, is that there is less focus on previous rejections. We saw that students who went with previous rejections, some of them had three, some of them had four rejections, were not even asked questions about their previous interviews. So this is a positive trend which means that the visa interviews are focusing on what your profile is right now, which university you have right now, which course you're going for right now, and whether this course and this university makes sense for your profile. So there seems to be less focus on previous rejection this also could be due to the fact that right now the students who are going for their interview, most of them have had rejections last year, that means in 2023, so which is why they feel that they don't really need to focus much on the rejections. This trend might change slightly going forward, so as we progress into June and July, we will have more number of students who would have rejection recently. 
that means they would have rejection for this particular year 2024 and then we might see more focus on the previous rejection questions. Well, we are here for you for that. So in case there's any major change in the interview trend, we're going to bring you right here on this channel. Also, we are planning content on how to answer questions related to your rejection. So make sure that you subscribe and you stay tuned. And this brings me to the fifth trend and the fifth trend that we have noticed this year are shorter interviews. So last few intakes, we have noticed that most interviews do tend to be about one and a half to two minute and there were a lot of interviews which crossed the four minute mark. But this intake, we have seen that the interviews are shorter. Uh, they don't seem to have much time. Obviously, the volumes are much, much higher that they're dealing with. So interviews are short. A typical interview will have about three to four questions and the average duration of the interview is about a minute. If you've had an interview which has crossed a minute, just like the interview experience that we're going to share right now with you, then know that you had a proper long interview and the officer has thoroughly asked you all the questions. So these are the five big trends for fall 2024. Just to quickly recap, increase in casual conversational questions, increase in technical questions, increase focus on university, less focus on previous rejections and shorter interviews. So I really hope that this helps you uh, streamline and structure your preparation in a way that you are able to understand what is going on right now. And of course, if you need help, feel free to reach out. You can prepare with me one to one. We have tons of ways in which you can do that. You can take a single session, you can take a mock. You can also enroll for our packages. So if you have a previous rejection, proper preparation is a must. There's no doubt in that. So do check out our seven day course and our core package, which are detailed sessions in which you can work with me over multiple sessions and get prepared for the visa interview. The next part of the video is the interview experience of a student who got her visa approved in fall 2024 intake. In fact, her interview was just two weeks back and she is going for a double masters. She's already done her MBA and now she's going for masters in marketing analytics at UT Austin. And she's here to share her experience. Her experience is a perfect example of how to handle a visa officer who's not very pleasant and how to handle an interview in which you're repeatedly being cross questioned. So do give it a watch. This is good to hear. Congratulations. Thank you so much. This is your this is your win. This is our win. <laughs> I like that. Yes. This is our yes. win. Yes. Good to see you on the other side, finally. After. I know. I I think I mean I'm gonna tell you how it was, but I just cannot like believe it. I feel I've been in this loop since last one year and now it's over. Yeah. Take some time to sink in till you yes. sit Right, I think it'll still feel <laughs> it's in process. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Which embassy? Mumbai. Okay. Yes. So tell us in detail what you saw in Mumbai. How was it? Of course, about your experience. Yes. So I'll tell you exactly in detail what happened. So I had my interview on the 5th of June. Uh, my, in my interview time was 9.10. But uh, it started off really late. Of course, there was a lot of crowd. But um, I think I got my, I think I had my interview at 10, 10 and I was out by like 10, 13. Um, but yeah, overall, there was a lot of crowd. Um, it started raining in the morning. So <laughs> we kind of like, yeah, it was, it started raining heavily. And you know how Bombay rains are, right? It started raining and then. Uh, thankfully there was um, like people with umbrellas so they provided us umbrellas uh, we bought those and then uh, yeah there's no space to kind of keep your bag in Mumbai embassy just an FII for everyone who's watching this so all you have all you can uh, take is a mobile phone and keep because they have like it's a sa locker so um, yeah this I didn't know that so I went with my bag and they're like you don't have space so I went back to my hotel in oh. the rain Okay. And I was like, I have to go because I was just staying five minutes away. So I was like, I'll take that chance. I'll go back. Then I came back and then we got called. Everything went well, but there was a lot of like waiting line. So you go in, um, everything's happening in the same room. They check your, um, I think they checked, yeah, they checked my I-20. The first thing that I checked was my I-20, my passport. Um, and they checked my service payment. Once that got done, they send you to another line, which is the final line where you where they allot you like counters. So, um, I mean, it was a huge line and everybody can hear and see everybody. Right. So um, 
I think it was we were at a 60 40 where 60 percent were getting approved and 40 percent were getting rejected. It was not just students; it was a mix of everyone. They had come for their B1, B2 visa. There were people who were doing L1, L2 interviews, all of those. So it was a mixed crowd. But obviously, it was uh, majored with students because it is a student season. Um, so yeah, the I was standing at the last counter and then i go and they uh, they assigned me this counter and just before me two people actually got rejected so this time i think this time what i did was i made sure to not like you said sachi don't get bogged down at all i didn't i didn't at all because last time i remember that people in front of me got approved and then i got rejected and it was just too much to kind of take in so this time i made sure i will not listen to what other people are saying but yeah you tend to listen obviously but i didn't pay any heed this time so yeah two people in front of me actually got rejected i was on counter number 28 but they do keep changing the uh, officers of course so it was it was an american officer of course um and uh, yeah the moment i went in i said i greeted him with I greeted him saying good morning officer and he i I think he greeted me back, but I don't. I can't recall. I think he smiled. So um, then, the moment before taking in my documents, he just asked me the first question. That is obviously because there's too much rush, less time. So as soon as I hand over the handed over the documents, he said that um, uh, why are you going for masters in business analytics? Right, because that's what's mentioned in my I twenty. So I corrected him and I told him I'm not going for masters. It's just mentioned there. I'm going for masters in marketing. Um, and then he kept typing, right? So and he goes like, "Why are you going for this course?" Right. So I I I told him the answer that you had told me, right? Uh, that you know I I plan to do this. I've been working since two and a half years, so I plan to do this course and. Um, it will kind of bridge the gap between what i'm currently doing which is at a very basic level and just make me dive deeper into it so then he starts typing right he's looking at my whole ds160 and he can see that i'm refused and stuff but i i kept i kept looking at him right um, and making the eye contact and then kind of went ahead and uh, um explained the whole situation so once that got done he just looked at his computer and he goes like uh, you've done an mba uh is that because last time last time during my on my ds160 i had written mba while as my degree says pgdm and mm-hmm. this time we had written pgdm only right as per so he says that you've done an mba or a pgdm so i i'm like it's a post graduate diploma and he's like uh is that an equivalent to an mba i was like yes it is an equivalent to an mba uh, it is a two year course in india and it's a full time to your course so he goes like uh, uh okay 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 so i was expecting him to ask me you know why were you refused last last year because we had prepared a set of so many questions right and then and then you won't believe what he asks me next he's like so why do you want to do this course again the same question like nice. you told me exactly nice. like you told me right in, in the mock interview that you know he might ask you the same question so i just quickly recalled right they might ask you the same question again so reframe then i reframed it like we had kind of practice saying that um now after 6 years i feel the kind of education that i will do will be a lot different from what i had done i had touched only surface that time this time i'll dive deeper our concept sequel analytics and then and then he he's, he's typing all this aside right but i'm looking at him right so last 30 seconds he looks at me directly and we have that eye contact and then he goes like have you taken a loan and i'm like yes officer i have taken a loan of 24000 us dollars and then i was like okay fine he'll ask me the next next question you know what are your savings and stuff like that because my i20 doesn't mention anything it just mentions the full amount tallies the amount so i was like acha theek hai next question is going to be like i have it written i have it memorized or whatever so then he's like uh and he doesn't smile okay and then i'm obviously ready for everything and then he's like uh, okay your visa is approved have a great day and then it was the end of it and i said thank you so much officer and i think i was i remember i was in tears i might have been tears in front of him but i was in tears it was i mean i still remember all my answers because i have been practicing them so much but it was i think it was a great experience so yeah you come out of the embassy yeah. and you just take your phone and i i remember i i messaged you i called my mom up i called everybody and then Yeah. <laughs> It was a great time. 
Oh my God. But I can't believe the same thing happened because uh, like I remember your mock first, we did why this course, then I asked you again that why you need a master's after an MBA. And then exactly. we said that, okay, you now touch upon MBA because you need to give a slightly different version if the same question is being asked twice. But I can't believe that actually happened. That's like <laughs> It's like you knew my questions. But yeah, I mean, it was, I think it was the moment I came out, I was like, it's the same stuff that you told me and it came on. Uh, I mean, it was just really good. But yeah, overall, I would say, I can't say why people in front of me were rejected because I can't say it for myself. I don't know why I was rejected. But it's just probably they they ask you, right? I think they ask you the second time also if they haven't understood the first time. So I think that could be your hint to kind of um, explain better because I saw officers doing this, especially in Bombay. They want to know. They want to approve. Mm -hmm. So... Um, yeah, overall it was very nice, very unprecedented, unpredictable experience. <laughs> so, I mean, I couldn't tell till the end of it that something positive is going to happen because he was not smiling at all. So, but to be fair, the last officer rejected you with a smile. So, I think... Correct. It was not Correct. <laughs> so, we never know. But yeah, I think just I what really helped me was that I was really prepared with anything that comes my way. So I think all your sessions and I mean, I've since yesterday, I've spoken to a lot of people on WhatsApp also. I'm trying to help people. But every time they ask me something, I'm like, you know, Sachi can help you. Right. She, Sachi can seriously help you because, yeah, you really, really did help me. I think it was very specific. That really helped me. It was not like a generic, generic you know, I want to do my master's because I'm, I want exposure and all of those things. Because everybody says that. I think two and a half years of experience diving deeper touching surface, all of those words really help. Got it. I have a few questions, whether because I can see something very specific in your interview. Okay. Hmm. Uh, first of all, like your course name was different in the I-20, which the officer caught upon in the beginning. Hmm. And this yes. is happening to a lot of people now where they're like, okay, this is not your course, why all that? So hmm. how did you deal with that? Right? Uh, like you were proactive, right? So what exactly did you say to him? For that. Yeah, so he said, so the moment he looked at my ad he saw the masters and he saw the business analytics written and he goes like, why are you going for business analytics? So the first thing I said to him was that it's it's written is masters in business analytics. However, it's masters in marketing, masters MS and marketing. However, there are courses that are similar to business analytics as well, like the technical concepts. So mm -hmm. that's how he understood that it's different. That's it. He didn't ask for any proof of it. Or... No. Okay. No. Second thing, as you mentioned, that there's a lot of typing when he was doing. Mm. During mm. that time, did you speak or were you silent? Because you are a chatty person, right? So did you mm. like during that time? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I think he asked me the question, then he started typing, right? Okay. And then he asked me the question. So he left on me to just an open-ended conversation, like a monologue. So mm. there was no moment of silence, to be honest. I was so talking throughout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, because this is the doubt many students have that when the officer is busy, should we talk or is it like, are we disturbing him? Mm. Mm. So, confused. Is it okay to okay. talk? Mm. It's okay to talk because mm. I think he is listening to you and you don't mm. have much time to say right. to talk, utilize that time. For yeah, if he's, if he's left you with a question, definitely answer it in, in length. I mean, mm. in length as in use that time. But he's, if he's told you, because I saw one officer, yeah, this was when I was standing, I saw one officer and she's typing something and she just goes back, right, to check something. So that time, obviously, you can't talk. Right? So, I mean, I mean, it's very case to case. Yeah, it's very case to case. And she came back literally after like two minutes. The student was standing there. Maybe she went to check something. But yeah, the student was standing there. So it's very case to case. He left me with the question. So I kept uh, answering it. Okay. Looking at him. Looking at him. Like, hmm. yeah. Hmm. Right, right. Okay. And third thing is yours is a double master's, which I know hmm. is like something which scares a lot of people. Right. And also probably the reason why you got refused last time because she didn't really understand why hmm. you want, you hmm. know, another. Hmm. So what was uh, the one change which you felt that, okay, I was able to convince a double master's this time? which I didn't convince last time. I think last time my answer to this was that um, 
this the course that i've done is very specific a very very general in 2018 and the course that i'm now doing is very specific this time i think my answer was that i linked it all to my work ex right so currently i'm working but even after a pgdm i feel there's a lag so probably linking pgdm with work ex with finding the gap within and then taking it to msm that link probably got established when i was talking to him the first time in the first like i asked you right how do i establish the first 10 15 seconds with a show which is so crucial Hmm. So that is essentially how I feel. I kind of must have changed things. Got it. Okay. And uh, the last thing which you already told us, but just to reiterate, the same question got asked twice. Hmm. So I, the first time it was just the first question, right? Why this course? He is also not fully into your interview yet. Like hmm. he said, he asked for your documents yet. Hmm. Hmm. Started it. So hmm. probably I asked again. Hmm. Yeah, uh, you can just probably summarize it. What you did when the same question is asked again? Yes. So the first time he asked me, I think we already had like a few pointers. Like this is how you link why there's a need for this course. And the second time he asked me, I just told him that you know there has been a gap. There has been a gap in terms of um, how things have. Uh, I would say transitioned from that year to this year, and. essentially i've just touched surface but i've kind of got gotten ahead and uh, um i want to dive deeper so i kind of uh, i didn't say two different things i said the same things just in different words like you had mentioned so, yeah i think i essentially said the same thing probably that is what he was looking for right sure. if you're not changing stance but just said it in different words essentially made the same sense i would say I think this is another like big change that we're noticing this year. They want the interview to be a little bit more casual. They are also seeing whether you're just learning something and saying it because somebody who's just learned one thing will come and repeat the same words again. Mm. Right. They don't want that. They want to see mm. that at that moment you can right. you know, think a little bit. Correct. More. Correct. Correct. But I also use words like you know as mentioned earlier, this yeah. course, mm-hmm. and. all of those things so i linked it i would say mm-hmm. just so that he knows that you know i'm essentially saying the same thing because essentially you're also asking the same question <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah and last thing anything else you observe about mumbai mc specific last time where did you go last time to me? delhi delhi okay so what hmm. changed i would say mumbai embassy was a lot more quieter right in delhi embassy first of all uh, when we were standing in line there was too much like um i would say people people were talking and then there were interviews as well but in mumbai and embassy i feel people kind of respected the fact that you're there so essentially don't talk much so that also meant that you could listen to every single conversation between an officer and a student or somebody who's an applicant but yeah i think that was it and also uh, mumbai embassy um i might be biased now but mumbai embassy uh, was i would feel a lot more um synchronized in the sense that everything What? was happening right in front of you right the service check the hmm. i20 check and then sending you and they were very clear and they were calling out the fact that you know we just need these documents which essentially didn't happen in delhi embassy because they were like keep all your documents but mumbai embassy clearly calls out that you know these are documents that you need to keep in check so essentially yeah i would okay. say those things all right did you see any particular officer any particular rejection mass rejection did you notice anything like that or was it general uh, it was really uh, it was really general because uh, there was an officer a lady officer um who who she was overall like on the mic she was loud right when compared to other officers and she was quickly coming up with decisions so she was quickly rejecting quickly approving and she was really like if she if she would approve she would be like congratulations see you in uh, uh, you know have a great stay in the um, uh, have a great stay in the united states of america so she, she was overall very bubbly but she was also rejecting i think i would never kind of forget her but yeah uh, i mean I'm yeah like, it was it was very like balanced that way hmm great Thank you so much. This really helps. <laughs> thank you so much, Achhi. <laughs> I can't I even thank you enough. Also, because <laughs> it's very interactive and 
<laughs> like I'm just telling you the answers and you're listening and you're like okay yeah. mm. coming up with a strategy so yeah it was a great time worked everything worked out absolutely yeah. absolutely thank you so so much and i'll definitely be in touch with you and to everybody who's watching this is not at all sponsored i highly 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 recommend and this comes from somebody who's been so like lost for a year so thank you so much sachi i really i'm so grateful thank <laughs> you so much absolutely take bye. care bye. bye so this brings us to the end of this video i really hope that you found this useful If you have any more questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. You could also DM me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Rajshachi. Mal. And if you need any additional help for your interview preparation, feel free to reach out. Stay tuned. We have more videos coming up. The next video is going to be a mock interview video. So this will help you practice and prepare for your F1 visa interview. And that's going to be out next week. Signing off for now. See you soon. Bye.